Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Boris Lushniak. I'm the dean here at the uh, University of Maryland School of Public Health, and I welcome you to this celebration. Uh, notice that I'm not necessarily calling it a commencement, right? Where we have have to change things almost at the last minute uh, is a major disappointment, right, to everybody. That includes Uh, and in particular, it includes obviously this community that we wanted to gather. Our vision tonight was completely different, right? We're supposed to be at the Xfinity Center. There are gonna be hundreds, if not a thousand people in the audience. We were going to go through the pomp and circumstance of signifying the end of an educational pathway but also the beginning of the next chapter, the beginning of that sense of what comes next. Now, the reason I'm calling this, we're calling this a celebration, is the fact that we still will gather in person. It may be not tonight at the Xfinity, it will be, we hope, in the springtime, where we ask you to come back to campus, for us to celebrate accordingly, for us to make sure the pomp and the circumstance and the joy is there. Now, are we doing the right public health thing? We're a school of public health. Obviously, this pandemic, now going on two years, has really changed our lives to a large extent. I congratulate you for your resilience, for your dedication. You are part of the graduating classes out there who have had to endure a lot in the midst of this pandemic. But as opposed to just doing nothing, certainly the faculty and the staff and, and our team at the School of Public Health wanted to put together at least this celebration, this acknowledgement, this sense of coming together. And, and to have you at least through the world of YouTube and live stream, to be able to sit down with your family members, whether it's live or whether it'll be under a recorded session shortly, to be able to say, okay, at least there was a celebration in the midst of all this. Also at this point, want to welcome our various speakers that we're gonna be having tonight. Uh, and, and so I welcome our group of speakers to share their screens, wave and say a quick hello. This is an important time of our coming together in celebration via this community. So speakers, wave hi, say hello. Hey everyone. Good evening. Hello, Hi, everyone. Good evening. Yay. So anyhow, um, the group that's gathered here tonight is all about what? It's about, yes, celebrating the graduates. At this time, which is our December graduation, tonight celebration, we have nine students who are getting their doctoral degrees years and years of study, years and years of, of research. And, and so we celebrate tonight with them. We have 32 students who are getting their master's in public health and master's of health administration, master's level degrees. We have two students who are getting their master of science degrees here tonight. And also we obviously have our near and dear undergraduates, 45 students from behavioral and community health getting the bachelor's degree, 49 students from family science getting their bachelor's degree tonight, 70 kinesiology bachelor students and 98 public health science bachelor students. Per our tradition, we're gonna go through a very short version of a celebration. But at the same time, we'd love to begin with and introspection, the ability for us to sit down and think through what is good in our world, what is around us, who is with us, and how are we sharing this? It's my honor to present Reverend Sarah Aikes Cardwell. She's the interim Episcopal chaplain at the University of Maryland in College Park, and she will give the invocation. Reverend Aikes Cardwell, Cardwell, please. Thank you so much, Dean. And Good evening, everyone. It is really my um, honor to be with you this during this gathering as you're recognized and you're celebrated. 
Um, and it's my hope that we might ground our time together in gratitude. Gratitude for all that you have done over your time with this institution, um, for those who have walked before you and alongside you during this season of your lives. As students of public health, you have a unique understanding of how important community is, how it forms us in deep and really significant ways. And so we're going to pause at the outset of this gathering just to remember those communities that you've been a part of at this university, those who have been sources of support, those who have been sources of challenge, and give thanks for their role in shaping who you are and who you'll continue to become. Now, this time of year, um, people of all kinds of faith and secular backgrounds, they mark this season with lights, lights that shine in the darkness, be they uh, the lights of a bonfire at a solstice celebration on a menorah, an advent wreath, or strung along rooftops. They help us remember that we're part of something that's bigger than ourselves, and they shine as a witness to perseverance and hope especially in times that are uncertain and fearful and full of despair. Tonight is actually the longest night of the year. And now more than ever, your lights, your knowledge, your empathy and skills, they're needed in a world that is aching for you to help be a repairer of the breach. And so I wanna offer this blessing, which comes from the Franciscan community. May you be blessed with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you will live deep within your heart. May you be blessed with anger, anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you will work for justice, freedom, and peace. May you be blessed with tears, tears to shed for those who suffer pain and rejection, starvation and war, so that you will reach out to comfort them and help turn their pain to joy. And finally, may you be blessed with foolishness, enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you will do what others claim cannot be done. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend. Thank you for this um, opportunity for us to be able to gather like this and to hear those words of thoughtfulness and recognition, not only of the season, but recognition of the celebratory event here tonight. Our next speaker is uh, by tradition, we always have a student speaker. Uh, and I'm really thrilled tonight uh, that our student speaker is Ikechuku Ekwunife also known as E.K., also known as Ike. And what's interesting is that a few weeks ago, I was walking down the street in front of the School of Public Health when Ike came up to me to introduce himself and telling me how thrilled he was that he was the chosen speaker here tonight. A native of Anambra, Nigeria, I graduated with honors from Prince George's Community College before transferring to the University of Maryland in the fall of 2019. He has served as an active member of Jim Gymkhana, one of my favorite sports teams on campus, one that's housed at the University of Maryland School of Public Health. He's also an active member of Phi Alpha Epsilon, the communications chair for the Southern Ma Management Leadership Program, and as a mentor with the College Mentors for Success Program, all while working in customer service and at a physical therapy clinic. He's passionate about giving back. He volunteers his time working with underserved communities in the United States and in Africa. He plans to pursue a doctoral program in physical therapy and hopes to work in sports medicine and open his own practice in Nigeria, promoting the importance of physical wellness, exercise, and nutrition. It's my pleasure to have Ike share his thoughts with us. Ike, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Nguishniak. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ike Ekonife. I would first like to give thanks and glory to God for bringing us here today. We can all be proud of our successes given the challenges of COVID-19 and remote learning, even if this isn't the exact celebration we were looking forward to. As a Nigerian American, I was constantly reminded by my parents and of the significance of my cultural background. I was taught to use whatever is at my disposal to adapt to new situations and challenges, to never lose sight 
of the kind of person I want to become and the value of hard work and perseverance. After spending and finishing three years of high school back home in Nigeria, where I went to connect with my family and my culture, I came back to the States to begin my undergraduate studies. Yet I did not know exactly what I wanted to do at first. I think that many students can definitely relate to that, especially in the African culture. There's often pressure by parents on their child to become a lawyer, doctor, engineer, or an IT guru of some sort. But I didn't have the drive or the passion for those fields. I wanted a major and a career that gave me a life's purpose. I figured that my why has to be very strong. I needed an anchor. I needed something to keep me grounded and to remind me of my why. The main thing I realized that I truly care for was the well-being of others and the science that supports mental, physical, and emotional health. I knew that when I transferred from Prince George's Community College to University of Maryland, that the School of Public Health was the right fit for me. Through my years in college, it was organizations such as the Southern Management Leadership Program that taught me the importance of entrepreneurship, leadership, and advocacy, as well as Jim Khanna, who taught me the importance of health and wellness. On a trip to Nigeria to visit my friends and family in early 2020, I volunteered at the Guardians Angels Orphanage near my hometown. Spending time with children ranging from infants to teenagers to adults, and helping them with their homework. Serving a community with limited resources was so rewarding. It made me realize even more that the well-being of our people should be our first priority. And as a kid, my mother would always tell me, never limit yourself. I never forgot those words because it constantly reminded me to branch out, try new things, meet new people, and build and improve on different skill sets. And public health is a prominent example of never setting a boundary because there's a lot to explore and a lot to be done. Through public health, we are able to prevent diseases, promote good health and wellness, and prolong life. Every one of us has our reasons for choosing the School of Public Health and the major that we did. But I believe I can speak for everybody when I say it at its core, it's because of the love and the care we have for our society and for its people. Public health science majors, you have explored the scope of this field through the lens of both public health and in science. With this, you are able to analyze data that can be used to identify and solve problems with public health issues. Behavior and community health majors, you've shown us your commitment to advocate for health equity and social justice through public health practice and policy. Family science majors, you've employed empathy and compassion to support the mental, physical, and social well being of all families and eradicate health disparities. And last but surely not least, of all undergrad majors, my department, kinesiology. Kinesiology majors, we have promoted physical activity for the betterment of our overall health and to promote good wellness and health to heal from injuries, disabilities that limit our activities and well being. And I can't forget all the graduate students who are taking their public health knowledge to the next level, pursuing research and leadership positions that will advance this field. We were all studying various aspects of public health when the pandemic hit us like a whirlwind. Three things I learned from this period were one, when things get tough, we have to push through. We may be faced with what seems like a wall, but then that wall turns into an open door. Two, we will have times where we feel burnt out, unmotivated, or even question what we're studying is even worth it. And to succeed, number three, we must first be tenacious and never settle for less than what we deserve, which is to reach our fullest potential in this life. We can turn our losses into lessons, lessons that will make us stronger, wiser, experience, and most importantly, it builds a sense of character. Even through all the silent battles that we've gone through, things that we've kept to ourselves and things we've internalized, the pain and the loneliness that we felt and the uncertainty of what our next steps will be. But I'm here to tell you that students, our future is so bright. We just have to guide them. In order to do that, we have to thread the needle, find harmony and a straight path between the opposing forces that we encounter and when we feel that the weight of the world is on our shoulders. Because there will surely be struggles along the way. That's inevitable. But as the late and great childhood Bozen said himself, those struggles, adversities, and hardships are only there to prepare you and shape you for your purpose. Therefore, use that as your anchor. All these things that we face, both good and the bad, help us shape us for the greater good, to contribute to things that are just beyond ourselves. Therefore, be a game changer and make a difference, or at least try to if not be a part of one. Because when we start something and face challenges, we must give it our 100%. And in that way, like we have in the past few years, we can and we will.
finish strong. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. God bless. Class of 2021, congratulations. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Ike. Uh, thank, thank you, you so for, for your passion. Thank you for coming up to me a few weeks ago and introducing yourself. Uh, and one thing that didn't happen that we had hoped happen was Ike actually was telling me that he didn't even inform his family that he was selected as the speaker and they were going to learn tonight as he was yeah. on stage. So I still hope that your family is celebrating with you here tonight, Ike, and that the, uh, this, this honor is shared amongst them. So thank you so much for your work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker uh, is someone who's well known to the School of Public Health. Uh, she's a very important partner to our school. Uh, and, and she is Gloria Aparicio Blackwell, the founding director of the Office of Community Engagement at the University of Maryland. Notice the importance of community, of making sure that we as a School of Public Health don't just teach within the classroom, but in essence, public health is best, best thought in the communities. And, and she has been, played an integral role in connecting us with those communities through her advocacy, through her planning, through her service, her partnerships and storytelling. Uh, Ms. Aparicio Blackwell and her team build bridges between the university and the university community and the surrounding neighborhoods. She's been at the university for more than 24 years. And her work is based on building long lasting relationships, learning community challenges, opportunities and, opportunities and assets, fostering a sense of trust and listening to the stories unfolding in that community. With that knowledge in mind, she convenes campus stakeholders, community leaders, residents, faith-based nonprofits, government agencies and businesses to work together and explore solutions, resources, ideas towards the common good. Gloria serves on the School of Public Health Community Advisory Council and is an important participant and facilitator of some of our school's community engagement activities, including the work led by the Center for Health Equity to increase COVID-19 vaccinations through Black-owned barbershops and beauty salons. Gloria, welcome. Thank you. Buenas no good evening. Buenas noches. Thank you for the lovely introduction, Dean Luzniak. What a nice message from the student, from Ike. That's exactly what we do, engaging in the community, and he epitomized that, that action. It is a great honor to be here this evening in this celebration. I am sure that you were not planning for another Zoom gathering. I knew that. But can you imagine life during the, during the pandemic in 1918 when Zoom was not a thing? Can you even imagine that? But I'm grateful today because I'm here to congratulate you all for your accomplishment. You are the class of 2021. Yes, yes, class of 2021. We also must acknowledge the parents, family, friends, faculty, and the staff for a job well done. Your support, encouragement, and commitment were invaluable to the student's success we are celebrating today. The pandemic, mental health crisis, and social justice issues made your educational journey harder and unpredictable, but you preserved. You should give yourself a pat in your shoulder and not the back for achieving this milestone. I hope you did it. Despite the obstacles you have to overcome. These past two years expose your true character. To reach these days, you have shown determination, resiliency, and hope. Now, you have the opportunity to put into practice on real issues on re in real time, what you have learned in the classroom and from your research. Who knew that the stage will be set for you to be a defender of your profession? and showcase the critical role it plays in the community. As the saying goes, we are all in the same storm, but we are not all in the same boat. This was a consistent theme during the live's webinar held in the community about COVID-19. In, in one effort to address this community concern, I was honored to work with Dr. Stephen Thomas from the School of Public Health, Maryland Center for Health Equity. Dr. Thomas, along an outstanding group of healthcare professionals, 
And students like you led a program called Shots at the Shop to engage thousand Black and Latinos owned barbershops and hair salons nationwide to act as health advocates. To be, to be clear, this model started prior to the pandemic with the mission to empower these business owners. They are located in the heart of underserved communities and provide information to reduce the impacts of social determination of health rooted in these communities. This is exactly what public health and community engagement are all about. It is connecting on the battlefield to build trust as we listen and learn about the community's challenges, opportunities, and assets. Yes, assets. Our underserved communities have uh, assets, human assets. You don't know if we're going in front, if we're in front of the next astronaut, the next physician, the next teacher, the next electrician, musician. Yes, US president, public health professional, community engagement practitioner, and the list goes on. It is about finding ways to bring resources, knowledge and opportunities so that talent can flourish. We can see that social media, as much as it kept us connected, have negatively impacted these communities, particularly with misinformation and disinformation. The polarization of the pandemic has influenced their decision whether to do the right thing. This has fatal consequences. For us, it was to bring information in plain language, delivered by trusted voices, experts and familiar faces. I recall the explanation. No, the vaccine doesn't have a chip so the government can track you down. No, we don't need to know your immigration status to receive the vaccine. No necesitamos saber tu estatus migratorio para darte la vacuna. But also, there were so many aha moments and a light at the end of the tunnel. We indeed, have proved again that with good intentionality, I've been using intentionality a lot lately, and empathy, we can empower disenfranchised communities. It takes time, commitment, and understanding. There will be setbacks and frustrations, but in the end, you will see the fruits of your labor. The outcome is worth the effort. There are many stories that I could share with you as you embark your new journey as public health professionals or continue your life learning process to find your passion. I found my passion when I changed my career 360 degrees from being a fire safety expert to a community engagement practitioner. This humanistic approach to connecting resources, knowledge and creativity with underserved communities rich in talent, challenges and opportunities puts a new fire in my heart. It is all about action-oriented, again, intentionality with the common goal of mutually beneficial outcomes. And that is good for us all. As you begin this new chapter of your life, I would like for you to consider the following. Be kind to yourself and to others. A simple hello or just a smile can mean so much to a fellow human being. Be the voice to the voiceless. There are many injustices taking place and it's critical to have voices of reason. Be that person. But most importantly, have fun and passion in what you do. Life is full of surprises and we can all decide to make positive difference in this world if we want to. I know you will. Muchas gracias once again for this opportunity and I wish you and your loved ones a joyful holiday season. All the best in the new chapter of your life and continue to be fearless. Go Terps. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gloria. Yes, go Terps. And thank you for your level of enthusiasm and your partnership in the midst of, of everything that you do uh, for the good of the community uh, and uh, your wise your wisdom here tonight, your words uh, certainly have filled uh, our, our audience with, with a refocus on mission. 
Thank, uh, you. thank you so much, Gloria, for being part of this, this uh, celebration. Here My tonight. pleasure. And, and I love the slide that she was using as her background slide, because I will remind you once again, this is not commencement no. 2021. We'll have time to celebrate in person. We are looking for those days when things will be different. And so we welcome back the, the, the class of 2021 in the near future to be able to have that celebration in person. But as I mentioned, there, there is a transition going on, right? Uh, with degrees that are being accepted here today, uh, you, as, as Gloria has mentioned, uh, as Ike had talked about, are, are stepping into a different zone, so to speak. Uh, part of that is you become, through the granting of the degree process, something called an alum, right? You're no longer a student necessarily within the University of Maryland, you still may continue your studies, whether at Maryland or other institutions, but automatically you achieve a status, which is very important. It's called being an alum. It means that you are now having passed through the School of Public Health, having worked through the challenges at the University of Maryland and College Park, have now a new status. And to welcome you into that status, we have a person who once stood within the very halls that you stood in at the School of Public Health, and, and that's Jameson Roth. She graduated from the School of Public Health with a bachelor's degree in family science in 2017, and now serves as the vice president of the School of Public Health Alumni Network. She's a digital content specialist at the Association of American Medical Colleges. Jameson believes in the power of community, and envisions a connected and engaged School of Public Health Alumni Association serving students, faculty, and the greater University of Maryland community by uplifting and sharing public health knowledge and opportunity. She's thrilled to give back to the School of Public Health through service on the Alumni Network Board. Thank you so much for being here tonight, Jameson, and I welcome you to the podium. Awesome, thanks so much, Boris. Hello, public health terps, and congratulations to each of you on reaching this milestone of graduation. I am continually inspired by you, not only by your academic achievement, but by your determination in overcoming obstacles, your passion for implementing public health change, and your unwavering commitment to service, both to the school and to each other. You each embody what it means to be a terp. This past year and the year before it have presented each of us with previously unthinkable challenges. The uncertainty of the times we are living in has given us the opportunity to find fortitude within ourselves and as a community, to examine what we've already conquered and also to look forward to the battles yet to be fought. There is no greater privilege for me than being able to celebrate you and not just the accomplishments of your recent past, but the limitless potential of your future. Four and a half years ago, I attended my commencement ceremony wondering what lay ahead for me. I graduated with Dean's List honors and a job offer, and yet a very limited idea of what I wanted to achieve out in the world. Fast forward just a few years later, and I am speaking to you now as the vice president of your alumni network, giving back to this community in a way that I never thought possible. For those of you tonight who are riding a wave of success and celebration, I am with you in your victory. If you are tuning in tonight unsure of what the future holds, or thinking to yourself that your time here at the university maybe wasn't the best two, four, six, or however many years of your life, I am with you in solidarity with the promise that the potential of your future is too great to be held back by the past. Tonight, you pass the torch in becoming the newest graduates and invaluable members of the School of Public Health Alumni Network. Your new network consists of over 10,000 Terps all over the world who are committed leaders and supporters of the University of Maryland and the School of Public Health. We hope when the timing is right, you will consider giving back by mentoring current students as you navigate life after graduation, an experience I benefited from greatly in my, few for in my first few years post-grad. There are no doubts about the high volume of public health-related work that await you. Whether you are passionate about research or teaching or any other vocation, you have the power to create great change in this field. We want you to stay involved as public health terps because there is nothing more important than your intentional service. We are so proud of how you promoted our school's mission of health for all as students and how you continue to navigate these unpredictable times. Now we implore you to stay fearless, bring back your ideas, 
your energy, and all you create for the advancement of public health. I am certain that there is no group better suited for the job of enacting real change in this field than you are. From one proud chirp to another, congratulations. Welcome to our alumni community and get ready to roll up your sleeves. We're thrilled that you're with us. Congratulations, class of 2021. You did it. Great, thank you so much, Jameson. And thank you for that enthusiasm and for your volunteerism. Uh, to our graduates, remember that, you know, the School of Public Health and the University of Maryland played a key role in your life. Uh, and, you know, part of it is, as Jameson had talked about, is staying connected with us. Don't be strangers. Let's hear from you. But also get involved, right? The whole idea of mentorship of our current students, the whole idea of giving back through time, through effort. Uh, through, yes, contributions in other ways to the School of Public Health and, and to the University of Maryland is a key way of staying engaged in that whole academic world that you've been part of all this time, which culminates to some extent with this celebration here tonight and also, as I'll mention, a celebration in the spring. Uh, so we all join together. I thank our speakers here tonight uh, for being resilient. Uh, at the last minute, going from a total cancellation to committing themselves to be able to be here with us tonight, we all join together to congratulate the class of 2021. And although you aren't walking across the stage in front of people, uh, we are going to be showing your names across the screen. So please, everyone, stay on to view the scrolling of names of the winter 2021 graduates. I thank our team at the School of Public Health the staff that have worked very hard uh, uh, from the communications team, Kelly Blake and Ben Ferris, uh, from the office of the Dean, Aaron McClure, and, and many others who have put in their time over the last few days to make sure that all this worked. Uh, I know it's not what we all expected, but boy, this has been a great little get together and a great celebration. So let's roll that footage of the graduates. Thank you so much for being here tonight with us.